Hello and welcome to this, the fifth instalment of the Agile Basics series with me, Alan Kelly. Today our topic is teams, specifically vertical teams. Vertical teams is just one element of having effective teams. We're going to spend most of this recording talking about vertical teams. I also want to talk about the importance of evolving decision making and keeping teams together. Vertical teams alone is not enough you need to make them effective teams. Traditionally, companies organize around horizontal teams. So we have a specialist in business analysis, another specialist team in user interface, another specialist SQL database team. And getting anything other than the smallest piece of work done, getting projects done, for example, means getting different people from different teams to coordinate and work together. But within the horizontal teams, people may be pulled in different directions by different projects, by different priorities. What's a priority for your project isn't the same as the priority for one of the horizontal teams. Consequently, getting projects through horizontal teams needs a lot of coordination and a lot of management. Projects stall for no particular reason when you have multiple different teams handing off to one another. Our solution in Agile is to use vertical teams. Each team is staffed with the skills they need to do the work. So projects align with teams and teams can do what they need to do to get that piece of work done. It might be that you have one specialist from each group in each team. That's the obvious thing to do, an analyst, a UI person, a business logic person. But maybe you don't have a specialist. What you want is people to have general skills. You want people to try other things. So for example, the analysts can help with the testing and the business logic people might be help out with some of the UI work or some of the database work. Having all the skills does not mean you have one specialist for each skill set. People will have multiple skills. Yes, there are limits. Few of the testers will want to try writing C++. But the more cross-skilled the people are on the team, the more they're able to help out in other areas, the better the work is going to flow, the more easily you're going to get through work. And when you have a team, staff it with all the skills you need from day one. Don't wait until the last possible moment. For example, don't wait until you're near the end before you put a test on the team. Roll the roles, all the roles and all the skills are going to be needed all the way through. And to make the team effective, you want to devolve decision making to the teams. This will speed up decision making because when a team don't have authority, time and energy gets spent seeking the authority from those who do. So you might recognize this. It's a traditional organizational chart. Now, if one of the guys at the bottom has a question and he has to go up the chain, he has to talk to his lead, talk to his manager, talk to his manager, the question permeates all the way up the chain until it gets to the top and you get an answer. And that means you get one delay after another. And when the decision is made at the top, it has to come all the way down again. Even the smallest decisions can introduce holdups. And the people higher up are the people who are busier. The people who are higher up are the people who have many demands on their time. So the higher up the hierarchy you go, the more difficult it's going to be to find the people you need to find and have them have the time to make the decision. So you want to push the authority down. You will hear people talk about self-managing teams, self-organizing teams, and my least favorite expression of all, empowerment. I don't care what you call it, whatever you call it. The principles are push authority down, devolve decision making, let those closest to the work make the decisions. And while we are talking about teams, please, please, please keep your teams together. Too often in corporate environments, I hear of teams being split up at the end of a project. Even when this doesn't actually happen, the mindset that the team will be split up in the future can be very damaging. We don't invest in our teams perhaps because we're expecting the team to be broken up. We don't invest in the people on the team because we expect them to be working for somebody else. 
Though quite often teams do stay together, the mindset the team will be broken up is very, very dangerous. But teams do get broken up, and I have to ask, if you have a performing team, why would you break them up? If you have a performing team, keep them together. Breaking successful teams up is something I call corporate psychopathy. We need to just stop doing it. Stop breaking up teams that are performing. Stop releasing the staff back to wherever they came from. Keep your teams together. Build on the team's experience. Build on the team's knowledge. Let the team work out how to optimise and how to improve itself. Think of successful sports teams. The same team, the same core, stays together season to season. Yes, a few people will move from time to time, but on the whole, the core of the team is the same. There you are. There's the three points I want you to remember. Keep your teams vertical. It's the team that does the work. Have all the skills on the team. Have people who will try and do other work, cross-functional people. Give the teams the authority they need to do to do their work. And keep the teams together. I call them stable teams. Some people call them sta static teams. Whatever you call them, keep the core of the team together. I hope you've enjoyed this little discussion about teams. This is the last in the five topics on Agile Basics. Um, there's one more short episode I, I hope you'll find time to read, Conclusions, which we'll, we'll pull this together and try and summarise it. As always, if you have any questions, there's my email address. If you have any questions or comments, feel free to email me. And if you're not joining us for the final recording, well, well thank you for listening. And please, please, please buy one of the books. Um, there they are. Thank you very much. I hope to see you back for the final conclusion. Goodbye.